Why don't we start today in child's pose? We can have it be a really restful pose where even the arms are allowed to rest by holding them alongside the body with the palms facing up next to the feet. If you're not able to rest your forehead on the ground in this posture, then if you have something handy to prop your head up with, that would be good. And if not, then you place your hands under your forehead or make fists, whatever you need so that your head is supported. And then we'll take a nice deep breath in and feel the breath spreading wide into the back ribs. And then as you exhale, feel the weight of the torso sinking down toward the thighs. And then another deep breath in, feeling the whole back body breathing. And then as you exhale, letting the back body just relax and sink down. And again, a deep breath in, spreading wide and moving throughout the whole spine. And then when you exhale, maybe relaxing the arms and shoulders down even more. And then just continue with slow, steady, deep breaths. Letting the inhale and the exhale be the same length. If it helps, you can count, but you don't need to. Just, just be aware that your inhale is long and slow and your exhale is also long and slow. And then bring your hands onto your lower back. And with your palms, just start to rub your back firmly. And then make circular motions with your palms. And then make gentle fists and just tap your back and go up and down as high as you can go. And then tap the sides of the hips. And back to the back. And then relax the hands down and bring them under the shoulders. Tuck your chin to your chest and very slowly roll up. Very, very slowly. That's good. Sitting on your feet. Coming all the way upright. And then with an inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale and bring the hands to the ground behind you. If you're able to lift your seat off your feet, if you're not, you'll just lift your chest and drop the head back, and then we'll come back down and fold back over. Beautiful. And then inhale all the way back up with the arms. You can come up 
off your seat if you wish, or just sit. And then exhale, bring the hands to the ground. Inhale, hips up or just chest up. And if you can drop your head back, go ahead. If not, drop your head forward and then exhale and fold. So ideally the movement, because it does take quite a bit of time and continue, helps you slow the breathing down. So you wanna try your best to just do one inhale or one exhale with each movement. And the next time you come into the position where your chest is lifted, maybe your hips are also lifted, maybe your chin is also lifted, but at the very least, we want to lift the chest. So you move those back ribs under and forward. And we'll just stay there. And if you have your hips off your feet, you can press the tops of your feet more firmly into the ground to help bring your hips more forward and deepen this opening. And if you're in the version where you're sitting down, you can press more deeply into your hands to help bring your chest more forward. Closing the eyes and really feeling the breath spread into the heart. Keep pouring the breath in beyond the initial place that feels like it's the end of the breath. See that you might be able to keep inhaling and find more space. Make more space, perhaps. Good, if your hips are lifted, bring them down. And then let's all fold forward. And this time, we'll bring the arms overhead. And then press into the hands to send your hips back. Feel the long stretch from your hands to your sit bones. And the long breath that travels all the way through. And then take the hands over to the right. Pressing the right hand into the ground. Send your left hip back and reach out of the left hand. You do, you notice how the breath naturally gravitates toward the place that you're opening and stretching? See if you can use the breath to open and stretch even more.
And then push off your right hand, lifting your hips back up. Bring your right hand in front of your left arm and then come down onto your left shoulder. Cross your feet at the ankles. Take a deep breath in. And then when you exhale, push with your right hand and roll toward the back of your head. And then lift your right arm up and back, as far back as it will go. And when you inhale, squeeze the ankles. Deep breath in. Exhale, relax. Let the ribs twist. Bring the right hand down. Slowly press yourself up. Bringing the hands over to the left as you sit back down on your feet, relaxing the head down. And press the left hand into the ground to send your right hip back and away from that hand. Reaching the hand away from the hip. Letting the breath fill the distance between the two. And then push into your left hand, lifting your hips and place the left hand in front of the right one. And then just lay that whole right arm down, coming all the way up to the shoulder, coming onto your cheek, crossing the ankles, breathing in. And then with an exhale, press into your back of your head. Let the left arm come up, reaching it as far up and maybe even back. And then inhale and squeeze the ankles. So it might feel like you're squeezing them together. It might feel like you're trying to pull them apart, whatever works for you. Letting the ribs twist to the left as you exhale. And then bring the hands down. Lift yourself up. And release the feet. Good. And we'll just move the shoulders a bit. So keeping the hands under the shoulders, we're just gonna let the chest drop down and then lift it up. So notice how my body is moving but my arms are not, I'm not bending my elbows in any way. My upper back is just lowering below the height of my shoulders. There, the contrast. I'm not moving my spine. I'm not doing cat and cow. That's not what's happening here. I'm just letting the chest drop so that the shoulders feel higher 
and then pushing into the hands and letting the chest and upper back lift again. Just getting some flexibility in the shoulders and the shoulder blades. Good. Come back to stillness. And then bring the right hand down so that the forearm is under your chest horizontally. And take the left arm forward, walking the hand out as far as it'll go. And then letting the head relax down. And try to do that same action now where the chest drops below that right shoulder. Please try to sink the chest down. You can rest your head. Depending on how you line up, maybe your chin rests on your forearm. Just try to make it as effortless as possible. And then keeping the left hand firmly on the ground, just pull the left hip back. Nice, slow, deep breaths into it. And then bring the hand in. Lift yourself back up. We'll do the other side. Left forearm under the chest, right arm walking far out in front and the chest and the upper back dropping. And then pull that right hip back, keeping firm with the right hand on the ground. Notice if the breath automatically changes. When I find that my body is challenged, my breath will automatically deepen, but I know that it might also be the case that your breath would automatically shorten or you may not notice any difference, but just see what happens and try to deliberately breathe deep. Slide that hand back, slowly lift yourself up. And then we'll come in puppy pose or half dog, walking both hands forward, dropping the chest, keeping the hips over the knees. If you can come onto your forehead, rest that down. If you can go deeper and rest the chin, feel free. If you want to go even deeper and you can, you can turn and rest a cheek. Stay with your breath. If you're on one cheek, turn to the other one.
this cat pulls the hole there. Put it aside. And breathe. Lift it back. And come back to neutral. Walk the hands over to the left of it and step the right foot forward, but not center, a little bit off to the side, and then pivot the right foot out to the right. Drop the hips down. And then try to bend your elbows, lowering. If you can bend them, bend them enough so that they come to the ground. Go ahead and do that. And then maybe you want to stack your fists and rest your forehead. Now press the right big toe into the ground. Beautiful. Come onto your hands and then slide that left arm all the way out to the left. We're going to roll onto the outside of the left hip. And then we're going to try to bring our left shoulder to the ground. And just rest on the left side of the face. And then if you want, you can bring your right hand to your right leg and gently press it away from you. Stay with your breath. And if you're using that right hand for the adjustment, return it to the ground. Bring the right leg on top of the left leg. Bring the hand in and press yourself up and come back to hands and knees. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too to follow. <laughs> ah. So we'll try the other side. Walking the hands over to the right. Step the left foot up. Turn the foot out at an angle. Drop the right hip down. And then to whatever extent you're able, bend the elbows so that you lower even more. And if you can come all the way down, then maybe you can also Stack your fists and rest your forehead. Deep breath in. On the exhale, drop the hips and press the left big toe into the ground. Find the fullest expression of your breath that your body allows. And if you're not already on your hands, please come onto your hands. And then we'll all take that right arm all the way out to the right. And have level with the shoulders. So not out in front, but out like three o'clock. Good. And then we're just gonna roll over onto the outside of that right hip, sending that right arm down to the ground. Rest on the right side of your head. And then if you feel like you have room to stretch a little more and you would like that, then you can use your left hand 
to press your left hip away, your left knee away. It's okay if the if the toe or part of the foot rolls off the ground when you do that, that's fine. So the body's in quite a contorted shape here. This is probably the personification of why people refer to yoga as putting yourself like a pretzel. And you're really in an interesting position. And maybe see if the breath is also a little bit more interestingly shaped as a result. The more you experience breath in the body and not just as this kind of discrete, small movement in maybe even just the bottom of the lungs or the top of the lungs, but if you feel it more diffusely, you start to notice that it does respond to these crazy shapes we take. Okay, and return the hand to the ground if you were using it. Bring the left leg back, and then we'll just roll over onto our belly and take both arms out to the side. Good, feel your body dropping into the ground. Press your hips into the ground. As you inhale, lift your head. Exhale, release it down. Inhale, lift your arms as high as they'll go. Exhale down. Inhale, lift your head. Lift your body as much off the ground as it'll go. And exhale down. Continue like that, lifting the arms. Pressing into the pelvis to lift the head and chest. And then the next time you lift your head and chest, hold there. And then also lift the arms. Feel the shoulder blades rolling in toward the spine. And then flex the hands at the wrists. And do your best to straighten your fingers and stretch through the hands, fingers, and wrist. And then breathe up into the collarbones. And release down, turn to one cheek, and rest the arms by your side with the palms up. Clasp your hands behind your back. Notice which thumb is on the outside. Bring your head to center. Press the on your forehead or your chin. And then press the hips into the ground. And then see if you can slide your clasped hands up higher onto your back. And then try to move the elbows toward each other and then straighten the arms, folding the shoulder blades in toward the spine. And again, pressing into the pelvis, lift your head, lift your chest, reach your fists back for your feet. See if the breath can fill into the entire 
lungs. Rolling from the bottom ribs all the way up to the clavicle. And relax down, release the hands, turn to the opposite cheek, rest the arms. Now make fists with your hands and place them inside your hip bones. And bring your head center and rest on the forehead, not the chin. And then lift the legs, spread the toes, reach back through the toes and up through the heels. And relax down, release the arms, and again, turn to one cheek. You are great. Stay with it. And then bring your head back to center, forehead or chin is fine. Press the hips and pelvis down to the ground. Inhale, lift your head, roll your shoulders back, lift your arms, and then exhale, lift your legs. If you want to work a little bit harder, the arms can come out to the side. If you want to work harder still, the arms can come out in front. Reach back through the toes, up to the heels. And if your arms are in front, lift the thumbs. And relax everything down, arms by your side, turn to your other cheek. Let the heels rest out. Really feel the rest on the ground. Notice how you don't need to do anything. Bring your head back to center and we'll do the final posture in this series, bending the knees. Reaching the hands back for your feet. If you can't reach your feet, hopefully you have a strap or a belt or a towel handy and you can take that around your feet and hold on to the ends of that or maybe just hold on to your pant legs. Good. And then really important here, some of you have already started already, but we, we don't want to hurry through the steps because we want to protect the back. So press your tailbone down to the ground. Notice how profound that is. It feels so different than not doing it. Really, really stabilizing. And then as the hips press down, we can lift the head, the shoulder blades rolling toward each other, and then we lift the feet. If you're holding your feet at your ankles, you can flex your feet. Take your eyes up to the sky. Kick your feet up and back. Notice the challenge to your breath and rise to the challenge, breathing even deeper. And 
and release it down. Mm. You can turn your cheek or rest your hands on your forehead if that feels better. Rest your heels out and rest, resting in feels better. Just let the legs go. And then bend the knees. Your hands can just rest however they're comfortable. And just let the feet windshield wipe from side to side. And then come back to center. Have the bottoms of the feet together. And then we're going to let the knees open wider, keeping the soles of the feet touching. Lower the inner ankles down toward the floor. Slide the hands under the shoulders. Separate your feet. Push yourself up and come into child's pose. Exhale and collapse. Just deflate and let the body Release. And then extend the arms overhead. Lift your hips off your heels, keeping the hands where they are. Spread the fingers wide, curl the toes, take a breath in. And then exhale, lift the knees, keep them bent and press your hips back, pushing forward with your hands. Feel your spine lengthening. So you don't want that length to happen in the shoulders. It's really easy to do that for some of us, that the shoulders open. So we wanna purposely pull the shoulders down the back so that when we lengthen, it happens in the spine. And then press the left heel down. And then press the left inner ankle toward that outer ankle so that you're more toward the outer edge of that foot and your arch is lifted. And then just let the left hip drift over to the left a little bit. Just notice the stretch that you get from that. And then come back to center and bend the opposite knee. Left knee bends, right leg straight. Push into the hands, sending the hips back and the heel down. 
And then press the inner right ankle toward the outer ankle. Take a few breaths there before we move on. It's hard when you're doing the second side and you know where it's going. There's so much of a temptation to get there already. You just notice how that shows up in your life. And then we'll take that right hip over to the right. Come back to center and then straighten both legs. Roll the elbows down to face the ground and see if you can do that move that we did in the beginning of the class where we drop the upper body and chest lower than the shoulders. Let the head release toward the floor and then repress into the hands, especially the first two fingers or rather the thumb and the finger, lengthening back, pressing down through the heels. Okay, and now we're gonna walk the right foot forward so that it's about a foot behind the right hand and then walk the hands back, shifting weight to the back foot, and then lift the front foot. So if you're not able to touch the ground, which I imagine many or even most of you are not, then it's quite a balance challenge. If you have anything handy, like I have a water bottle here that works to hold on to, anything really, to support you is fine. If you happen to be able to touch the ground, great, but don't bend the front knee just so that you can touch the ground. The ground is not important. Good, now inhale and lift your chin and chest. Deep breath in, exhale and release. If you can bend your elbows, go ahead and do that. If you can drop your head more, Please do. And then bring the foot down, let the front knee bend. Walk the hands forward, step that right foot back. And then just notice, how does the right leg feel compared to the left leg? Does the right heel come down any more than it did before? Maybe not, just check in. There's no right or wrong, no bad, just what is. And then we set the left foot forward not all the way to the hand, but behind it. And then start to walk the hands back, shifting weight into the back foot. That foot will naturally probably pivot a little bit. The front leg straightens, even if that means lifting the hands. And we'll lift that foot off, the toes off the ground. And then inhale and look up, exhale and release over. Holding on. But whatever you're holding on to, hold on gently. So there isn't the feeling of tension in the hands or arms. And you wanna see if the chest can relax over toward the thigh, the head toward the floor. Feel the breath inside of it all.
And then let the foot come down as the front knee bends. The hands can come a little bit forward. Step the back foot up. Having both feet hip width apart. Tuck the chin to the chest and roll yourself up to standing. Reaching the arms up into the sky. And then exhale. And returning the hands down. Do that two more times. And then this time, clasp your hands behind your back in the opposite way from what you did before. And that was quite a while ago. So if you've forgotten, just do it whichever way it feels less natural to you. And then step the legs wide apart with the heels lined up with the middle toe. So the feet are straight and parallel to each other. And then roll the shoulders back and in. Lift the hands away from the back as much as you can. Inhale into the chest. Exhale and fold forward, lifting the arms, dropping the head. Good, and release the hands and bring them to the ground. Walk the hands around to the right. Let the heels come off, pivot on your toes, and bend your knees and come to sit down. So the right leg is bent and folded over the left leg. And then we'll complete the posture with the arms, taking the left arm up, bend the elbow, bring the hand to your back, and then bring your right hand behind you. Walk the hand up as far as it'll go, maybe the fingers reach the other hand. And breathe, cow face. Such a sad cow, because it's a cow with only one ear. And I guess the other ear is just down. <laughs> I don't know. Can cows lay one ear down or any ear down? OK, release the hands. Bring them to the ground to the left. And the feet are gonna stay where they are, but we're gonna pivot on them. So we lift the buttocks. See how I'm not changing where my feet are. I'm walking my hands around the back, all the way over to what is now the left. Letting my feet continue to pivot as I continue to walk. Let the knees bend and come and sit. We'll bring the right arm up and bring it onto the upper back. Bring the left hand behind, walk it up the back as high as it'll go, aiming for that other hand and maybe even connecting with it. Breathing with it. And then release the hands. 
and release the legs, shake them out, and bend the knees, and lower down onto your back. Lift your tailbone, tuck it under, release the legs and shake the legs out. If you're using an eye pillow, you can place them on your eyes. And then we'll let the arms rest out to the sides, a nice distance away from the body. Take a deep breath in through the nose, exhale out of the mouth, release the weight of the body into the ground. Inhale through the nose. Out through the mouth, releasing the jaw so the bottom teeth don't touch the top teeth and the lips slightly part. And inhale through the nose. Mouth, mouth, let go. Let the activity of the mind, the thoughts. Memories, the images, and letting go of the breath as well. Allowing the breath to just breathe for you. No effort. And we let the mind attention, rest, and wherever you feel the breath. See if you can be with the breath without giving rise to a desire to control it. Can you notice passively just resting the awareness in the rise and fall? And if the mind wanders, the minute you've noticed that it's wandered, you're already back. So that's great. Just return to the breath. Again and again. Deeply relax. Letting go. Letting go. Letting go.
breathing into your heart. Your fingers and toes. Reach the arms overhead. Take a deep breath, stretch long. Hook the knees to the chest. Rock from side to side, massaging your back. Come center, rub hand to hand and foot to foot. Move along to either side. Resting your head on your underside arm. Resting your body on the ground. Resting your awareness in the feel of your body resting on the ground. And then slowly start to come back up to sitting in any way you're comfortable. Your head lift last. Sink the sit bones down, reach the head tall. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, hands together, the heart. Inhale, heart up to hands. Exhale, shoulders, relax down. Inhale deeply, breathing in from bottom to top. Take it all in. Let it all go. Drop the chin to the chest. Namaste. Thanks for your practice.